Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. I'm standing in front of the famous Halford engine collection, which is dedicated to Frank Halford. Frank Halford worked with de Havilland and developed loads of piston engined engines. But what a lot of people don't realise is that de Havilland was also a major pioneer in jet engines as well. But was that pioneering a success or was it ultimately a failure? I'll leave you to decide in comments below. In 1942, the residents of Hatfield were complaining about noise coming from the Hatfield de Havilland offices. De Havilland's response was, this was just another generator. In fact, they were developing one of the first jet engines in the UK. The Goblin engine, which ultimately would be used to engine this plane, the de Havilland Vampire, which flew in 1943. So this is the jet engine that Frank Halford designed to work in the Vampire. This is the Goblin jet engine, one of the first centrifugal jet engines built in the UK. Frank Halford worked alongside Whittle, who was working in Gloucester's, whereas Frank Halford was working for de Havilland. So this was one of the first commercially viable jet engines in the UK. Let's have a look about how it worked. So in a centrifugal jet engine, the air is injected into the front of the engine and there is a fan that forces it out into these burner units here. And each of these burner units will burn that air and fuel mixture and the exhaust will then exit out of the back of the jet engine. That will give us our motive power. So the key point about this type of engine is it used a centrifugal compressor, just like the engines that Whittle himself was building. The air was brought in and forced out by this centrifuge. And that was a very different design from what other companies and other countries were doing, particularly over in Germany. So the centrifugal type compressor jet engine was one of the first design principles. And that was used in the Goblin engine. And later on in the next generation of jet engines, this is the Ghost jet engine. The Ghost was used not just in the Venom, which was the successor for the Vampire, but a version of this Ghost engine, this centrifugal compressor engine, was used also in the first version of the Comet airliner. So this type of jet engine was proving very successful. So up to now, Halford had worked on a centrifugal compressor design. It had proved successful. It had been shared also with the American Lockheed Corporation, and it was the basis of the same design that was also used by Whittle himself in his jet engine. But meanwhile, other countries and other companies were using a different approach. Rather than having the air pushed into a centrifuge and forced out, their approach was to take the air in and force it through the engine in one long length, what's called an axial flow engine. And it turns out that the axial flow engine was capable of a lot more development than the original centrifuge produced by Whittle and produced by Halford. So in the 1950s, Halford worked on the H4. This was what was called the Gyron, axial flow jet engine with reheat. This was a massive step forward from the original uh, compressor, the original centrifugal compressor engines. There were multiple compressors because an axial flow enables you to have multiple compressions one after the other. At the far end of the engine there was what is called reheat so you were able to get even more thrust out of the engine. This was an engine that was designed for supersonic flight. So by the 1950s, 
de Havilland had got an axial flow engine, one that was capable of competing with Rolls-Royce's Avon axial flow engine. It was the engine that was available for use in the P1121 supersonic jet fighter or the Sperrin supersonic jet bomber. So here was the possibility that de Havilland could become the jet engine manufacturer of choice for the British aircraft industry. Unfortunately, fate intervened. The supersonic P1121 was cancelled. The Sperrin supersonic bomber was also cancelled. So de Havilland found there were less and less customers wanting to buy the Gyron jet engine to, to power their planes. It looked like people were building things with Rolls-Royce engines rather than going to the Gyron. So it looked like the fate of the Gyron had been sealed. But that wasn't quite the end of the story. There was a need for a smaller engine. So de Havilland built this, the Gyron Junior. Smaller, lighter, but still a very powerful axial flow jet engine. And this engine was used in planes like the Hawker Siddeley Buccaneer jet aircraft. However, there weren't many other aircraft wanting to make use of the Gyron Junior or the Gyron. So both of these jet engines began to fall into disuse and production finished. So thanks to Frank Halford, de Havilland had been a pioneer in jet engines, starting with the H1, the Goblin, powering the Vampire in 1943, building other centrifugal engines such as the Ghost, and then realizing that they needed to change tack and going with the Gyron, and the Gyron Junior. At each stage, de Havilland had been a pioneer. They proved the jet engine technology. They had one of the first type-approved uh, centrifugal jet engines, one of the first type-approved axial flow engines. They were at the forefront of what jet engines could do. And yet, today, we tend to think of Rolls-Royce as being the main engine provider. So what could have it been? What might have happened? Was de Havilland's pioneering work a major success? Or do we put it down as a failure? Let us know in the comments below. Let's have your thoughts on that, about de Havilland as a pioneer, success or failure. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, share on social, social media. Have a look at our website, find out about our opening hours and come and visit us at the museum. See you on the next video. See you at the museum.